I'm Joseph Owen from the upcoming in the UK. Um, here we have the two directors of My Little Sister. Um, and I just wanted to ask, first of all, how was it working as a pair together on this film? What, what was the working process? So uh, we we've been uh, we know we've been knowing each other now uh, since childhood. So mm -hmm. we've been working together as a duet for many, many, many years. And Schwesterlein is one more movie as a duet and uh, we enjoy very much working as a duet actually and it's a lot of our way of communication wa way of interactions also that is interesting in, in this uh, twin story uh, the way we, we, we communicate some of a lot without talking we know exactly what the other one says or we say something and we know what she thinks and this is oh I shouldn't have said this because I can already feel it and it's about feelings a lot uh, this sensitivity uh, it's very subtle actually and we need uh, great actors to to be able to transmit this but uh, we never, we, on the set, when we shoot, we don't divide the work. There is not one is responsible for that and the other for that. So we keep the thing always alive. We are always in the present. And we never know who is going to talk to, to who after the take. We discuss the take. We make pretty long takes because as we come from theater, we like to do the whole scene because the actors have the whole emotion, emotional art, arches arc of the character. So, and then maybe one day Veronique will go and talk to Lars and I will go more to talk to the DP or, and we are always, uh, we do that in order to be always fresh and living the moment. And then in the editing room, we are also always there. Nearly for this movie, we were always there and we discussed a lot and this was pretty intense. The editing, yeah. okay. because on the set, we never argue. Nobody sees us, we don't. It's not that we hide arguing, we don't because we really have the same vision. But then in the editing room, you have to give birth to the movie. So of course, there are some uh, more intense moments. <laughs> sure. Um, and obviously you've mentioned the theater and the theater is central to, to both the, the, the main characters, both the brother and the sister. I just wanted to, uh, you to talk about this connection or relationship between reality and performance in the film and how you try to tease that out. This was, this was really the, the, the whole process, how to, to talk about theatre with real theatre people, how to talk about an actor who cannot act anymore. Lars was a bit, you know, they're a bit superstitious, the actors, so it's like, okay, I have to, to perform an, a, a sick actor I could also be sick one day. Is it good to do that or not? Shall I jump into this uh, pool or not? It's a bit, oh, and it was the same for Thomas Ostermeyer, who is really uh, performing his own role as a, as a stage director. But at the same time, they loved the idea of it and they really wanted to, to go with us into this very uh, bit strange world <laughs> of uh, semi-reality. But the script is really written, it's very written, and we discussed it a lot with them so that we agree, uh, we deeply agree with it. Uh, also, Thomas Stormeyer, he said, I don't want to see a dying actor on stage. No, no way. And we wanted, actually, it was first in the script. Not a dying actor, but a sick actor trying to act as long as possible. And he didn't want and so we had to change it for him. And it was a long discussion until we find the right words. But I'm very happy with it, finally. Oh, we had a version where we would replace uh, Lars uh, in the distribution. He would be replaced. And then Thomas said, no, no way. Uh, I would not do the play anymore if my main actor cannot do it, especially Hamlet, because Lars really gave to Hamlet his whole... Uh, uh, eco really is, is necessary to the play and this was another discussion with Thomas yeah it was a lot of um, yeah intent, intensity but it's good because everybody now is happy of what he's doing in the film and can really stand for it yeah. thank you so I was speaking to Nina earlier and she said there was a lot of conversations that you were having about how to kind of articulate this this feeling of grief this protracted kind of anticipation of grief and I just wanted to know how what you drew on to sort of render ideas around grief in the film. The, the fact is that we met her at the very beginning of the writing process and so she would kind of be part of this whole thing. Uh, we always knew that she would read the next treatment. It was a long writing process because 
did we tell you that... Uh, no, on n'en a pas encore parlé du, du décès de ta maman, en fait. Si. Non, non. No. OK, ben, t -t we had a very personal story. We were grieving... To the, fin, we, we were all, also in our private lives, in, a, uh, let's say, difficult times, and Stephanie can talk about it more. Just because uh, when we developed the movie, uh, I, I got to know that my mother had lung cancer, stage four. So while we were writing the film, uh, Nina, who was always here would uh, see that I was losing my mother and she could see that on me. And uh, as she says, she also inspired herself a lot from our duo. I guess this was part of the duo, that I lost my mother and Veronique's father died also just before my mother passed away. So as twin, <laughs> kind of twins, we experienced the loss of father and mother. So Nina, she's a sponge, she's an actor. So I think she, she also had that a lot. So she could play this anticipated grief Because it's true when you see the, the person who gave you birth disappear in front of your eyes. Uh, we gave that to her when we talk about the movie, uh, I mean, by just being who we were. And Nina really inspired, us, uh, insp inspired herself a lot from that. Thank you. And could you just explain the, the use of classical music in the film? And obviously the title in German is, comes from the Brahms, yeah. and, which is used in the film. And what role music was playing? Actually, yeah. We um, we uh, we had this Schwesterlein song during the whole writing process. It was there, uh, and also there was some Schubert, which is not in the movie in the end that Veronique discovered. Uh, and we have these songs that are here. And and during the editing process, we had really uh, at some point we we created these scenes, these mute scenes, but with music. Some were already in the script, but some were creating during the the process. And it's part of who we are. The music I listen, the Bach, the, la the last Bach, I, I listen all the time to it. So then, oh, let's try it in the movie. And, and so we bring really who we are in the music. But in this specific script, it's uh, very much talking. People talk a lot and it's very intense and they are always in intense relationships. And we had the feeling we needed some just to step back a bit, just to take some distance, or just to withdraw somehow, and we could give this with the music. Just, let, let's breathe for two minutes, and boom, let's jump again. And we needed it, actually. Yeah. And could you just talk about how place works in the film? Because obviously you go between Berlin and Switzerland. Can you just talk about... Uh, that, that, what that kind of what, what that sort of distance is doing in terms of how the narrative progresses between, and the relationship between the characters. Yeah, for us, we are Swiss, and we always want to leave Switzerland. This is something very many artists in Switzerland, but it's something maybe it's everywhere. You don't want to stay in your home country. You feel like you have to go away, to go abroad, to feel free, but. But we don't, actually, we are still living in Switzerland, but we always think that we are going to, to move or to, to be somewhere else. And it's interesting because, <laughs> <laughs> and we decided that our dream, dream place is Berlin and the theater scene, the Schaubühne, Berlin, and this is our dream, but we are in Switzerland. And we, I think we just maybe think unconscious, but we really gave this to our main character, <laughs> this, com com yeah, this complexity, this, this kind of inner struggle. And also when Sven is in Switzerland, at one point he says, let's go out, I can't stand this dump anymore, I really, I suffocate here. I mean, he expresses something also that we sometimes feel. Well, lovely, thank you so much, that's Thanks. great. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you.